We're continuing our studies in Chapter 2 on aqueous chemistry. In this lesson, we'll be doing a brief review of acids, bases, and pH. You'll want to make sure these concepts are clear in your mind before you move to the next video. And what we'll find is that pH is an important factor in all biological systems, so it will be an ongoing theme throughout the semester. First, we want to get clear in our minds that there's no such thing as a free-floating proton or hydrogen ion. Instead, it combines with water to form a hydronium ion, H3O+. This will be an important thing to keep in mind because we'll often use the shorthand notation and show the concentration of H+. What we literally mean is the concentration of H3O+. But even that is not entirely accurate because what we find is that instead the proton, rather than being associated with a single water molecule, is relayed through a network of water molecules. That's illustrated at the bottom of your slide here. What we find, recall, is that water is highly hydrogen bonded and readily changes partners and so that proton can move from one water molecule to another very rapidly and mobility is much greater than it would be if it were a matter of simple diffusion. The best example I can think of is imagine yourself in a very crowded room trying to move from one end of the room to the other. That would take some doing. But if instead you were lifted up above the crowd and passed along, you'd get there much faster. So as it were, our proton crowd surfs over those water molecules. So let's begin our studies of pH in an aqueous environment by looking at the aqueous environment itself, water. What we find is that water itself ionizes. This means that even before we add anything to the water, there are already hydronium ions, H plus ions, already present. So what we have here at the top is the dissociation of an intact water molecule to become H plus, remember that's H3O plus, and OH minus. So in this dissociation we can set up uh, an expression for an equilibrium constant that will give us a quantitative measure to the, of the degree to which it does dissociate. In this case, remember, we want to set products over reactants. So we have the product of the concentrations of H plus and OH minus over the concentration of H2O. Now this is an expression for an equilibrium constant. It's a K, a constant, it does not vary, and this is a capital K. So it's a matter of equilibrium or balance. It is not a matter of speed or rate. That would be a lowercase k. In this case, whenever we measure the actual concentration of the intact water, we find it's so much greater than the ionized form that our expression doesn't have as much meaning as it otherwise would. The concentration of the unionized water is on the order of 55.5 molar. So instead, let's take the concentration of intact water and let's move that value to the left of our equation. And so in that case, then, we have our expression here at the bottom, the actual equilibrium constant times the concentration of water, and we're going to define that as the ionization constant of water, or Kw. And that's simply equal to the product of the concentration of the two ions. When we do this and we actually measure that ionization constant, it's 10 to the minus 14th molar. In pure water, that would be pH 7, we find the concentrations of the two ions are equal. Keep in mind, this is an equilibrium constant, so that total, 10 to the minus 14th molar, will not vary. So what this means is if the concentration of one of those ions, say H+, plus, increases, the concentration of the other must decrease. And that's illustrated well on this figure from your book here. So we see that as uh, we have the concentration of H plus on the left in red and the concentration of OH minus in the blue on the right. And as we see, if we follow that red line, as that decreases from left to right, then our blue line increases from left to right. And in that center where the two lines cross, that's where they are equivalent and that would be pH 7. As we saw in the previous slide, the concentrations of these ionized forms of water, it's on a very small scale. So for convenience, let's convert those to positive whole integers. So to do that, we're going to take the negative log of the concentration of H+, plus. that's our pH value. The etymology of that uh, designation of pH is a little uncertain, but for our purposes, we're going to refer to that as the power of hydrogen. 
So what happens if the concentration of H plus increases above that value? So here in this figure from your book, the scale of pH, here's our neutral pH here at 7 and our uh, H plus concentration is 10 to the minus 7th. If that increases, what's going to happen to that exponent? Well, we find it actually gets smaller. It gets less and less negative as we go down the scale. So in this figure from your book on the right, the concentration of H plus is increasing from top to bottom. And since we're taking the negative log of that value, that means that the pH number is decreasing. So here we have neutral at 7. Anything above 7 is considered basic and below that is acidic. If it's only slightly above or below that value, it's considered slightly basic or slightly acidic. For our purposes, we're going to use the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. That is, an acid is one that, is, that has a proton to donate. In this example, we have a very strong acid, hydrochloric acid. It will completely dissociate and donate that proton to become 100% chloride ions. Then we have bases that are accept, uh, capable of accepting a proton. In this example, a very strong base, sodium hydroxide. Those hydroxide ions will collect each one a proton to become water. So in our next lesson, we want to look at how we can actually measure the strength of an acid, that is, what is its tendency, how great is its tendency to donate a proton, and how does that relate to pH.